Okay, so this is um, an example of line integrals. We're starting chapter 16.1. And um, I like to start with an example just so we can see what line integrals are going to be used for. Um, some of the problems at the beginning of this section just kind of seem random, like what are we ever going to use this for? Um, so we talked about earlier how to find the mass, center of mass, um, moments of inertia of three-dimensional objects. Well, if we go back to like finding the mass of a thin wire, which re really is in 3D, but we'll pretend that this has some mass to it. Uh, and if we've got a density associated with this, um, this wire is in the shape of a helix. That was a shape, common shape um, in chapter 13. Um, as a good example of a vector valued function in 3D um, curving around the Z axis from uh, here to here. And we have a equation, a vector valued function for this helix, um, cosine T, sine T, that's what makes it go around a circle. And then the Z value is constantly increasing as t time increases. Remember, this is X, this is Y, that's really Z. And so for this particular wire, it's got a density associated with it that's 2z plus 1. So the density of this wire uh, gets bigger as z increases. So for example, right here, um, the z value is actually 0. So my density here is 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. But up at the top, uh, the z value is 2 pi. My density is 2 times 2 pi plus one, which is a much bigger density. So you can picture this wire is getting very heavy at the top, very light at the bottom. And so we want to find the mass of this. And so to find the mass, just like we did earlier, mass, we want to integrate the density. Now, before we were doing it, over, we want, the density times little units of volume, what we want to do is integrate every little small section of this thin wire piece by piece, and a small section of a curve like this is a little tiny increment of arc length. And uh, earlier we used S for arc length, so we're going to integrate dS for arc length. And uh, we're going to integrate along this curve. So this is called a line integral. Um, some books use like a little notation, like a little circle here, just says we're integrating on this curve or our book uses a lot of times they use like C for a path, that's a curve. Um, I put both of them. Anyhow, recall the formula for DS, I was gonna put that here, this is from chapter 13. Um, built off uh, the arc length formula, if you have X, Y, and Z and they're all functions of T, it's really just the square root of DX DT squared plus DY DT squared plus DZ DT squared which can also be thought of if you think of dx dt, dy dt, dz dt. If I take the derivative of this, I'm really finding the velocity function, and this would be the magnitude. So that could also be thought of as the magnitude of my velocity function. Um, we might as well work out ds here. So dx dt, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of t. Derivative of sine of t is cosine t. Derivative of t is just 1. And so for ds, it looks like I'm just going to get sine squared plus cosine squared. And that's our favorite trig identity. This is just going to be 1. So we're going to end up with 1 plus 1. We're going to have root 2 for ds. So to find the mass, we're going to be doing the line integral. I'll use the book's notation, um, of the density function 2z. Now, here's the deal. Along, if my z parameter in my uh, path of the, of the equation of this wire is always t, then I want to integrate this. This integral is going to be in terms of t. So 2z plus 1 along this wire is going to be the equivalent of 2t plus 1, because that's my z value. 
So I'm going to be integrating 2t plus 1 uh, times my ds, which in this case is just root 2 dt. And uh, this wire, one curve of this helix was traced out between 0 and 2 pi. So those are going to be my limits of integration. And this is an easy integral. Hopefully you can calculate this. It's not really important what the answer is, but it's a very easy interval. You can pull out the root two. So the point is here is that we can, here we're using a line interval to calculate a mass. We have to add up all the density values at every little tiny point along this curve. And we're gonna, now we will have the ability to integrate anything. Uh, maybe there's something else we wanna integrate rather than just the density along a curve. And so in general, what a line integral is, is we're going to be integrating on a curve some function of perhaps x, y, maybe even z. And we want to integrate over little tiny chunks of the curve. So that's going to get multiplied by ds. This is our sort of our general formula. So when you start looking at problems in this section that um, just asks for you to integrate a function like this, and you're looking for some kind of a context, you could imagine that you're calculating the mass of a wire, a thin wire in space. Okay, so a reminder, a lot of the examples, um, the, the one we just did, the equation of the curve was given, it was a helix, and so you have that. But a lot of the problems here, you have to come up with your own parameterization, your own um, position function, your own vector function, R of t. And a very, very, very common uh, thing that you'd be expected to parameterize yourself is a line segment. So just for practice here, this was also done in chapter 13. If I want to parameterize a line segment going from the point 1, 2, 3 to 5, 0, 3, I drew the whole line, but I really just want that line segment. The easiest way to do it, and the way I visualize this, is imagine there's a particle moving along this line at a constant speed. And we're going to say, since it said from here to here, we're going to say that this is where our particle is when t is 0, and this is where it is after one unit of time later. So if it's moving at a constant speed, where would it be? when t is equal to 2, well, if I look at my x-coordinate, it's starting at 1, and then it got to 5 in that one unit of time, it makes sense that in the next unit of time, it's going to gain another 4, and it'll be at 9. My y-coordinate, on the other hand, went from 2 to 0. It subtracted 2, so that would probably be minus 2 now. And from 3 to 3, this is just staying constant. It's always 3. So. It gives us sort of a way that we can visualize the uh, parameterization. If I pick this as my starting point, then I'm starting at the point 1, 2, 3. And every unit of time, at least for x, I'm gaining 4 units. So that would be 1 plus 4t. For y, it's actually going to be 2 minus 2t. And for z, since it's always staying at 3, you could always think of that as 0t. It's just z is equal to 3. And if we only want this line segment right here, we would just put our limits for t just being from 0 to 1. You could, of course, there's, there's many, many different parameterizations for any given curve. If you decided that you were going to call this t equals 1 and this t equals 2, then you'd have different values here. And you could still possibly describe that line segment. This isn't the only way, it's just the simplest way. So as a vector valued function, this is a parametric equation for that line segment. Um, we're just gonna steal the x, y, and z. So I can write my position function as one plus four t for x, two minus two t for y, and just three for z from zero to one. Here's a problem I adapted a little bit from the book. So here we're asked to integrate this function over the straight line path from the origin 0, 0, 0 to the point 1, 1, 1, a straight line. I drew in some 
other lines here so we can visualize that as you're really going from the back corner of a cube to the opposite corner. You had a unit cube placed at the origin. So don't really have any context here, but again, maybe you could imagine that this is a density function and this is a thin wire and we're somehow trying to calculate the mass of this wire. So step number one, we have to come up with our own parameterization for this. So this is a line segment, we just did that. So let's just do it in terms of X, Y, and Z first. And remember the idea is I wanna pretend I'm starting here at T equals zero, here at T equals one, at least that's the easiest way. So my X starts at zero and it gains one unit of time. So it's just one T, Y is zero plus one T, Z is zero plus one T. So, and this would be true just from zero to one. So as a parameterization, I'm sorry, as a vector value function, I can just call this T, T, T from that same interval. So to integrate this function over this curve, I'm going to now do my f. And what you'd want to do is we have f of x, y, and z, but this is x, this is y, this is z, and I want to have it in terms of t. So it's going to be, uh, for x, it's going to be t, y is t, and z is t. This isn't always true. It's just for this example, times my I'm going to integrate over little tiny chunks of this. So that's going to be times ds. Let's calculate ds. So ds is the square root of dx dt squared. So that's 1 squared plus dy dt squared plus dz dt squared. So this is just going to come out to be a constant root 3. So that means I'm going to be integrating on my function evaluated at t. So I'm just literally putting t in for both all three of these variables. So I'm going to have 6t plus root t minus t squared. And that's going to get multiplied by root 3 dt. And uh, my limits are going to be from 0 to 1. So let's work this out. So the root 3 can come out. The antiderivative, I've got 3t squared uh, plus, that's t to the 1 half, so that's going to be t to the 3 halves times 2 thirds minus t cubed over 3 evaluated from 1 to 0. Three plus two thirds, because I have one to any power is one minus one third. And of course, if I plug in the zero, I get nothing for any of them. So I'm going to get root three, two thirds minus one third is one third. So three plus a third is 10 thirds. So times 10 thirds. Good enough. <laughs> Now, there is sort of a connection here in um, this next example. This is part B. It's the same function that we just did here. And I'm going from the same two points, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1. But this time, we're going to calculate, integrate this function along both of these paths. And the way it works, if you've got two paths and we want to integrate from here to here, we can just run the line integral along curve two here and add what we get along curve three. So we have to do two of these together and add them together. So curve two, what they're showing here is this curve is in the xy plane and it's following along the line y equals x squared. So this brings up the other way we can parameterize something is if you have the curve y equals x squared, if I want to parameterize curve two, I can just let x be t. And if y is equal to x squared, that means y is just equal to t squared. 
And because we're going from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, I can once again just have my limits go from 0 to 1, and that will take me to both of those points. So in other words, my R of t is going to be t, t squared. We are talking three dimensions here, so I get my z value is always 0. I can just have that. And that's going to be my x, y, and z. Um, we're going to want to integrate our function. We're going to plug those in for x, y, and z, these values. Um, and then we are going to want um, ds. So let's calculate that. ds is square root of dx dt squared. dx dt is 1 plus dy dt squared. That's 2t squared. And then that's just 0. So we end up with the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. <clears throat> and I'm going to integrate. This is this is for curve two. I'll put C2, where we're going to integrate from zero to one. And we're integrating our function x, y, and z evaluated at these values. So we're just going to get 6t plus the square root of t squared times um, ds, which is the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. At this point in calculus, you probably realize you got to be real careful with the square root of t squared in that it can be really technically plus or minus t. Um, square root of t squared will be t as long as t is positive. And because my t values are going from 0 to 1, I know t is positive. So I can just make that t if I want to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to make this. This will become 0 to 1, 6t plus t, which is 7t. So I have, let's move this over here, 0 to 1, 7t square root of 1 plus 4t squared. And this one looks like I could do it with a u sub. If I let u equal 1 plus 4t squared, du would have been 8t dt. Darn, so close. I have a 7t dt. So the way I would do it is I would bring the 7 out. This is my u. And in order to make the dt du work out, I need an 8t dt. What I have left over is a TDT, so I'm going to wish for an 8, compensate outside with an 8 on the denominator. So this will turn into 7 eighths, the integral of u to the 1 half, and the 8t together with the dt becomes du. The antiderivative of u to the 1 half is u to the 3 halves over 3 halves or times 2 thirds. Um, the two and the eight, that's a four. So I believe this will be seven twelfths. Uh, and then I'm going to put my u back in, which was one plus four t squared, and evaluate this from one to zero. Gives me an answer of, if I plug in one, this should have been to the three halves. There we go. That would have been five to the three halves. Minus, if I plug in the zero, I get one to the three house, which is just one. So this is what I get along the curve C2. But now I need to go integrate along my curve C3, which is a straight line segment from 1, 1, 0 to 1, 1, 1. So for C2, let me put this in here, my path. Notice my x always stays at 1, my y always stays at 1, so I can just say that's 1, 1. And if I just use the parameter t for, for z, I can get there if I just let t go from 0 to 1. Right. x and y will always stay there, and z is going to go from 0 to 1 along that interval. 
So um, let's find ds. ds is going to be the square root of the derivative of each of these squared. So that's 0 squared plus 0 squared plus the derivative of that is 1 uh, squared, which is just the square root of 1. It's just 1. So here for this curve along C3, we're just gonna integrate from zero to one. My function is six X, so six times one, right? Cause X, this is X, this is Y, this is Z. Six X plus root Y, so that's gonna be plus the square root of one, uh, minus Z squared, so minus T squared. T times ds, but ds is 1. So this is really just the integral from 0 to 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. That's going to give me 7t minus t cubed over 3. From 1 to 0 gives me 7 minus 1 third. If I plug in 0, I get nothing. So it's 6 and 2 thirds or 20 thirds. So what that means is my total value of this integral, I need to add these up. Uh, now add the integral along curve one. No, it was curve two that we called it of my function f of x, y, z, ds plus what I got along curve three. And I would get a crazy answer, 7 twelfths, 5 to the 3 halves minus 1 plus 20 thirds. And one thing I want to point out, because this is going to come up in the coming chapters here, go all the way back to 2a. We integrated the same function along just a straight line path from here, we got an answer of root three times 10 thirds. And when we integrated the same function, essentially from the same point to the same point, but just along a different path or set of paths, we got a completely different answer looking answer. And that probably you would expect that, especially if you're thinking of this as like the mass of a wire or something like that, or it doesn't matter where it starts or ends, you're finding those are two different wires. But more about that later. We'll talk about when you integrate along two different paths, you can get, uh, sometimes you will get the same answer and what that means. One last example here, uh, just as a reminder for parameterization. Here, we're just asked to evaluate along this curve two plus x squared y ds, uh, where c is the upper half of the unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals one. So that would go from negative one, zero to one, zero. It didn't indicate a direction here, so I don't think it really matters that much. Uh, but anyhow, reminder to parameterize a circle. This happened with the helix too. You're gonna use always cosine and sine or some version of that. If I let X be cosine of T and Y be sine of T, because cosine squared plus sine squared equals one, that will parameterize the top half of the circle as long as my t values only go from zero to pi. Zero to two pi would be the whole thing. And, and, and when x is zero, cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero. So this is actually t equals zero, and this is t equals pi. So we're actually, they didn't tell you, say which direction. We actually are describing this going from right to left, just like you'd move around the unit circle. So r of t, cosine t, sine t. Uh, and what's nice about that, of course, right, is my when I do my integral, I'm going to be integrating my function. This is x, this is y. My function evaluated at cosine of t, sine of t, times ds. But ds is the square root of dx dt squared, so that's negative sine squared, 
plus dy dt squared cosine of t squared. And that's just sine squared plus cosine squared. That's going to equal 1. So we really just have to integrate that function with x being cosine t sine t times 1 dt. And we're going to go from 0 to pi. So f of cosine t sine t is going to be 2 plus cosine squared t times sine t times 1, and then dt. So to do this integral, um, I would do it separately because this is going to be a u sub. So you could just say this is the integral from 0 to pi of 2. which is 2t, evaluated from pi to 0 is going to give me an answer of 2 pi of 0, 0. And here, that should be a dt, if I let u equal cosine, du is actually equal to negative sine of t dt. So you have a sign, you just need to like wish for a negative, compensate outside with another negative, and this will turn into negative u squared du, which is u cubed over 3, which is negative cosine cubed over 3 from pi to 0. I'm going to add this in. So I'm going to get negative cosine cubed of pi over 3 minus negative cosine of 0 cubed over 3. The cosine of pi is negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 times that negative is going to make that positive 1 third. This is negative 1. No, cosine of 0 is 1. So it's negative 1, negative. That's going to be plus also one third. So it looks like my final answer, this was two pi, two pi plus two thirds. All right, hopefully this is helpful and we'll get into the next chapter on the next video.